concept of style in yoga is a very modern phenomena. Traditionally, yoga did not have styles. It had paths. Some people would choose the path of devotion in yoga, which is called bhakti yoga. Some people would choose the path of practice in yoga. They would be called karma yogis. Some people would choose the path of surrender to the divine. They would be called as prapatti yogis, etc. But it was not based on a style of practice. It was based on the fundamental path that they chose. Styles is a modern phenomena that is brought in by modern society for marketing purposes. When people ask me what style of yoga I teach, I always respond, I teach the yoga that is appropriate to you. Because that is what is the fundamental teaching of Patanjali's teaching. Teach what is appropriate to every individual because yoga is meant to be a one-to-one -one spiritual practice. It was not meant to be a style. The concept of group classes only came from the 1930s. Before that, yoga was always taught one-to-one. -one. When Acharya, Krishnamacharya and perhaps Swami Shivananda, etc. started teaching young boys in the Mysore, Maha, Mysore Palace where my grandfather taught or in North India near the Ganges where Swami Shivananda taught, a lot of young people came to learn. And these young people were taught in a group because it was much more easier and much more motivating for <clears throat> the young people to learn. But it was not the only thing that these, these teachers did. They were also teaching other students one-to-one -one individually. So when you teach one-to-one -one individually, where can there be a style? Do we go to a doctor and ask him, what is his style? Do we go to a Buddhist teacher and ask him, what is his style? We can ask them what school you belong to what path you belong to and that is where teachings like bhakti yoga, karma yoga, prapati yoga etc fit in. But to talk about modern style like a yengar yoga is a style or a hot yoga is a style or ashtanga vinyasa yoga is a style is a bit trivializing of the holistic practices of yoga. It must be avoided at all costs and it must be reflected upon as to why we have to resort to such an extent to market yoga. Yoga has enough value that it will attract the right kind of people when it's taught in the right kind of manner. And this is very important for each teacher to remember. When we teach from our hearts, we will attract the right kind of people who will find a place in our big hearts. Whereas if we start teaching about it as a style, then we are selling a product, we are not teaching yoga.